Hey guys, April 9th, 2022. And yesterday I was giving the horses a round bail with the JD 1050. Had a park on an incline to open the gate. I did it alone, so I had to get off the machine, lock the park and brake down. Got on the machine, started pulling away, and thought, man, this is really struggling. It's unusual. Then I realized that I didn't disengage the parking brake. Second time I've done that since I've owned this machine. And the first time I did it, I said, if I do this three times to myself, I said, if I do this three times, I'm going to put in a light so that I know the, <laughs> the parking brake is engaged. Um, yeah, one of the joys of getting older, you don't remember everything that you did two minutes ago. So this video is about putting in a light on the dash that will illuminate any time the brake pedal is depressed. So it may be annoying, but I'm trying to do this quick and easy. So every time you step on the brake, you're going to get a red light on the dash. I'll show you that as we progress in this video. And any time the parking brake is on, you'll obviously have the red light as well. So when you get off the machine, you get back on, you look down to shift or whatever, you're going to hopefully notice the red lights on and you'll go, duh, parking brakes on and you'll take it off so that you don't try to drive off with it on like I did yesterday. So what I have here is this little scrap piece of aluminum. I have this switch. It's sort of like a door jam switch in your car in the older cars anyway. I know a lot of them now are in the uh, latch assembly, but I'm sure that uh, you may remember seeing a switch similar to this on the uh, the front pillar of the door. So when you close the door, the door hits it, pushes it, and your interior lights go out. So anyway, this is what I had on hand, so I'm going to make it work. This piece of scrap aluminum. I've already done a little bit of calculation and drilling. So I mounted the switch to this piece of aluminum, and the way this particular switch works, and let's see if you guys can see that. Okay, you should be able to. So we're going to set this on ohms. Door jam switches in cars are typically grounded to themselves which means when you screw the switch into the metal, it provides a ground. This particular switch does not do that. And I guess if you were going to run a ground to your light off the switch, you would be okay with that. But that's, again, because of what I have on hand, this is what I'm going to use. So if you check that you see we have continuity with the switch open if we close the switch it breaks the circuit and the light will go off so i'm going to mount this in a position that when you're not pressing on the brake the switch is depressed or closed and the light will be off or press on the brake it's going to complete the circuit and the light will come on and you can see there's no ground or connection between any of these pins to a ground. So yeah, again, when this is open, you've got a complete circuit. When it's closed, you don't. So I'll show you how this comes into play with what I'm going to do. And this should be really super simple to do. Maybe a little time consuming because of the drilling and the fabrication and so forth, but we'll, we'll move on and I'll show you what's happening here. Okay, so of course we're now at the machine and I'm not going to bore you with all the drilling and mounting and all that stuff. There's way too much of that on YouTube with making us watch all the ridiculous stuff on some videos. So anyway, this pad right here for the brake is where I'm going to mount this switch. And when you step on the brake, of course, the switch is going to complete the circuit. When you release the brake, the nut, I'm sorry, the bolt that is on the parking brake lever 
and the foot throttle is what's going to be used to close the, um, the switch, which is going to open the circuit and shut the light off. So this is going to get mounted here. I'm going to drill a hole through this pad and I'm going to nut and bolt this in with a quarter 20 stainless steel. I, I know stainless and aluminum don't play well together, but um, it is what it is. I'm just going to deal with it. So I'm going to drill this hole, mount the switch. I'm going to connect the wires to the back of the switch prior to that to make it easier and I'm going to use this harness right here as my anchor point to go up to the dash. So let me get this switch mounted and we'll be right back. Well, not right back. It'll be right back for you but not right back for me. Alright, so I've got my hole drilled in the pad. I made my wire connections on my switch and I checked them with my meter to make sure that you know it was going to function as expected. So what I'm going to do now if I had quarter inch loom you know that plastic flexible stuff I would wrap it in loom but I don't. So in its place I'm going to use some electrical tape and start off at an angle. You want to make sure that you're watertight or as close to watertight as you can get. And I did use um, some shrink, heat shrink wrap. I, I just happen to have all this stuff around. So now I'm going to cover the wires and the wire color absolutely doesn't matter. This is from an old set of fog lights that I had that, and I never used their stuff that, you know, come in the package because it's cheesy in my opinion. But um, this has an inline fuse. Probably not a super bad idea, just in case, you know, something goes awry down here. You don't want to short out. You don't want it direct connected to your ignition switch or a power source. That's going to cause a problem. So let me get this wrapped up. I won't bore you with that. And again, we'll be right back. All right, so now I have some electrical tape on this which should be enough to get it up inside and I'm gonna have to take the lower part of the dash off to uh, to access things but what I like to do anytime I have to electrical tape a harness is to put a wire tie on the beginning and the end of uh, the electrical tape and this will help keep it from peeling off And unraveling and it looks like you cared so we'll put one there and like I said I only went part way up this because I think that the rest of the wire should be buried up under here and the electrical tape really doesn't do much other than aesthetics and keeps the wires from splitting apart and getting someplace stupid. All right, we've got that done. So I'm gonna bolt the switch down and uh, then we'll come right back and see what's going on next. All right, so the switch is mounted and it's gonna work. I already checked it. And I ran the harness up through here behind the throttle and there's a hole, sorry, that comes through the back of the dash that you can fit that wire through. Now John Deere was really thoughtful and I would guess this is probably on all the machines. This is power when the key is on. So this is where I'm going to get my power from ground I have to figure that out but I may use the bolt that holds down what I think is the voltage regulator for the alternator um, so yeah now up here on the top of the dash there's this already existent plug 
they, man, they really thought that we may do this. So it's probably too small. I may have to drill that out. And that's where my light's going to go. So let me get my act together. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be back in a minute. Just to give you another view. And the wire that I taped actually made it inside of the dash. So I'm good to go there. And I've always had this kind of a motto. Unprotected wires are like unprotected sex. Things get too rough, it's going to burn. All right, sorry. Be right back. I hope you can see this because I can't see what you're seeing. Turns out that I have a bulb. It's an LED. It's a warning light from... I'm not even sure where, but it's a half inch diameter and it fits well into the hole that JD has plugged. So, first thing you want to do is we're going to use the switch as a ground. So you're going to want to run your ground wire through the hole. Don't make the mistake of connecting this without your wire going through the hole because you'll never get your switch in there, of course. I mean, I'm sorry, your light. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim this down. And since this is in the dash, I'm not super concerned about weatherproofing it. And we're going to put on the correct connector. Let me make sure you can see what I'm seeing. It would be an atrocity if you couldn't. All right, so we're going to splice in this connector. And then the piece of wire that I just cut off, we are going to splice in the other part of the connector. And this will make sense in a minute. So this one is coming from my switch, which is going to go to the ground side of your light. And they are polarity sensitive, which means you've got to have your positive and negative hooked up to the correct side, or it's just not going to work. And then we'll hook up our positive to this side, run that back through our hole, and then we're going to snap our light in place. All right, so there's our light mounted. doesn't really want to stay in there so good, does it? And I'm not concerned with the color of the wires, but this is going to be our positive coming off, of course, the positive side of the, uh, the light. And hopefully this fits without having to play with it. Okay, and it will. So we're going to connect our positive side of the light to that power supply that I showed you the JD's um, left open for us in this machine. I don't know if it's going to be the same on any other model. But if not, you're going to have to find a power supply that is hot when the key is on. So this is a shrink wrap buck connector, so we're going to shrink wrap it because it is. We're going to let that cool down for a minute. And then we're going to take our other wire, and again, I don't care about the colors. 
and we're going to leave a lot of wiggle room. And this is going to go to our ground. So I'm going to go grab a buck connector that will have a ring on it. And it looks like a 3-8 to, um, to the bolt that holds down. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this is the alternator voltage regulator. And we're going to connect that to, uh, to the ground. So we'll be right back. All right, and I guess as we all know, this machine was made in Japan. So the bolt that holds this down is actually a 10 millimeter. So I'm going to use, this is a spade connector style buck connector. If you don't have this, but you do have a ring connector, you can easily, with a pair of cutters, just, just cut a little bit off of each side and turn it into... Um, a spade or fork style connector, whatever you'd like to call it. Alright, so as it turns out, this bolt here that I decided to use for the ground, it's actually nothing bolted. It's not a speed nut, which is something like this, so that you don't have to hold anything on the back side. So I had to take this lower cover off to access it. But no big deal. So I've got my power connected and my ground connected, the switch, the little lamp. Pretty sure I did everything right. So let's test it. And just in case you all haven't seen any of my last prior other videos, I've been an ASC certified auto tech for 20 plus years. I've built fire trucks mainly as an electrician. So I'm pretty confident that we should be good to go. So let's turn the power on. Okay, power's on. No light. Let's hit the brakes. And there it is. So if we have the parking brake applied, that light's going to be illuminated, and that should very definitely catch your attention. So yeah, this is... <laughs> obviously, you're supposed to be bright enough. Well, I don't want to say bright enough, but... Paying attention enough to know that you've got the parking brake on, but... I'm not, apparently. So anyway, I'll know now when the parking brake's on, that light's going to be illuminated. Because it's, for some reason, I always seem to check my RPMs before I engage the transmission. And it happens to be right next to the tack. So yeah, this should, be, uh, this should be the last time that I ever buzz around with the parking brake on. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do next. And it's probably going to go right here is I've never liked idiot lights, like for the oil pressure especially. And I know this has an electrical oil pressure sender, which means I can put a mechanical gauge on it. And that's going to be one of the things that I do next once I get my, um, my joystick bucket control installed. So guys, if you hung in the whole thing, that's awesome. Hope this helps somebody probably helps nobody but me but you guys have a great day enjoy your weekend and we'll talk soon take care now i should have mentioned during the actual video that if something doesn't make sense or you need clarification feel free to post because i will reply all right guys take care